another episode of Celebrity Mixer. I'm your host, Alexis Renee, and we are here live at AT&T Chicago Pride Celebration Event with the beautiful Miss Betty Who, and she's an Australian singer, songwriter, and international pop star. She's well known for her viral single, Somebody Loves You, as well as her chart topper, I Love You Always Forever. And we're so excited to see her perform her latest single, Taste, in front of eager fans tonight. And then a little later, we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with her, so make sure you stay tuned because you don't want to miss it. guys, it's your girl Alexis Renee, host of Celebrity Mixer, and I am here with the beautiful Miss Betty Who. Hi. Well, let me say welcome to the States. Thank you. I am so elated to have you, and thank you for coming on my show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great. Thanks for being, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> well, thank you. Now, okay, so for people that don't know, which I'm sure is far and few in between, tell us a little bit about you and your music. All right, well, my name is Betty. I have been putting out music for about like five years, and I'm just working on my third kind of album cycle right now. I just put an EP out on Friday which I'm super psyched about um, and we are performing here at AT&T in Chicago and this so is amazing the first time I ever performed in an AT&T store, uh, store I don't know if that uh, shocks anybody but this is first of many. this is the first time yes very exciting <laughs> okay now I know you just said you just mentioned your EP right it's called Betty it's called Betty now how is it different from your other EPs or albums you've done um, you know, this is my first EP as an independent artist since my very first, it's the, the only other thing I've ever put out is one EP as an independent artist, like at my very beginning of my career. Um, so it sort of has this very like nostalgic, weird, you know, um, feeling to it of, of kind of doing it again, starting from scratch a little bit. And I think that shows in the music. I think it's really um, a little bit more eclectic probably of a, of a group of songs than anything else I've put out. I feel like everything else I wanted it to sound really cohesive and this I purposefully wanted to not sound cohesive. I think you still hear me and you know my stories that I'm telling in the music but I think it's sonically a little bit um, not like risky but it's definitely different for me and I'm super it's what is so exciting about it to me. Awesome and so nothing is more important than being who you are right and letting that come through in your music so that's amazing. Now my two top contenders right now okay it's Mama Say <gasps> and Taste. Okay oh my god. You got you got the sexy songs. You, I, yes. I, I know what kind of girl you are already. Yes, those are my favorite songs too. We are very similar. I like that. Okay, so what is your favorite ones to perform? To perform is different than favorite songs, especially because like some songs are really like "I Love You Always Forever." My cover of Donna Lewis is probably my, one of my favorite songs to perform. It's just we do it as an encore, so it's like you come back out and everybody's super excited to be there, and everybody just goes off. Um, so that is one of my favorites to perform, definitely. Mama Say is not my favorite to perform because it, I have to dance so much in it that like everybody loves it, but I'm always yeah. like, God, this song's really hard. Um, but I think probably my favorite song that I've like written, um, I have a couple, but right now it might be Wannabe. Wannabe is one of my faves. Okay. Now, you mentioned dancing, so is that something you love doing? You know, I grew up basically just wanting to be Britney Spears, <laughs> and I never... Um, I never took like dance lessons or anything, but I always loved dancing, and I always felt like sort of embarrassed to like. Really? Yeah, just because it's you know I spent my life learning. I was a classical cellist for most of my life. I went to school for classical cello since I was like 15, and so that um, that kind of drive and like everybody's kind of really focused on this one thing and it's hard to say like. But I like other stuff too yeah. sometimes, um, and so when I really was like. I was a like grown up and I was like in charge of my own life. I was like, guys, I want to be Britney Spears. I want to work with this choreographer who I love, who's, I met him on the Katy Perry tour when I opened for her. He was dancing for her. And he watched my show every single night. And I was like, Hassan's being so nice. Why is he watching the show all the time? Like, you've seen it once, you know, it's okay. And he was like, no, because like, you're going to want to dance eventually. And when you do, I want you to call me. And, um, and he and I have been working together ever since. And he is always like, yeah, he like really gets me and makes my life like, Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Now, okay, so you've been on both sides of the fence with being an indie artist as well as being signed to a major label. So what advice can you give to an artist that's struggling with that decision? You know, I think, um, especially as an up-and-coming artist, there's nothing that's more exciting than signing to a label. And a bunch of, like, you know, old, jaded people will be like, you know, I don't do it. Like, stay independent as long as you can. And, like, sure, if that works for you, it does. But also, it's really expensive. And there's a lot of hardship that comes with being independent. 
And sometimes having a label, even if they're not the right label for you for a short amount of time, is the right move for you. You know, I, don't, I think the advice I would give more than anything is like, don't let anybody else talk you into something. If, you're, if your gut says like, I should be doing this and everybody else is like, no, don't do it. Or you're like, I should be independent. And everyone's like, no, just sign to a label. Like whatever you feel is right for yourself. Like I let a lot of people talk me into a lot of stuff when I was younger and I don't do that we anymore. Have, yeah, that's the, that's the thing, right? Yeah. Go with what feels good for you exactly. and not for no one else. Now, okay, so you're such a tall drink of I'm water. So <laughs> So tell me, have anyone ever asked or assumed you play basketball before? Literally every day of my life, especially, you know, I don't know why, but in airports, people love to ask me, do I play basketball? And it's funny because my brother was really great at basketball and I, I was really like coordinated at very specific things. I actually played a female version of basketball called netball. It's like an Australian sport. Nobody else ever knows what it is, but I killed at netball, but I was not great at basketball. I wish. I, 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 if I had started young, I'd be probably in the great. WNBA. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now AT&T always does amazing events, positive events. How has it been partnering with them for the Pride Celebration today? I'm so psyched to be a part of any Pride Celebration ever, so I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> um, and it's really, it's been great. I'm so excited for tonight. It's definitely, a, as we said, a first yes. playing in a store. Of many. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, and it looks so great outside, too. They have all these big pictures of me outside. It's really yeah, nice. I know. I feel so special. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we are so happy that you came. I am definitely Hi. can't wait to see you perform. I know you're going to be amazing. It's going to be really lit. Keep doing I think your you're thing. Like it. Yeah, Mama I know it is. Your mama say too. I promise. Even though it's hard, you're going to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you so much again for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. Oh,